The Michael Berry Show. There's an article in the Houston Business Journal recently about John and Laura Arnold. John Arnold is listed as the 10th richest Houstonian. Uh, his wealth estimated to be about $3 billion. But he did not continue upon making it big to pursue wealth. He instead started a foundation and started in a Bill Gates sort of way looking for opportunities to use that wealth toward policies uh, that were important to him, that are important to him. So I read an article about a company called Civica Rx, which is a nonprofit generic drug company whose intention is to keep the costs low for pharmaceuticals for low-income and high-needs patients. So the article, which I should give credit to Chris Matthews, the gentleman who wrote it, um, he deserves his due because he describes what happens. You know, for most of us, we don't know about a drug. Obviously, we see drugs advertised on uh, during sporting events. Seems like the number one place that they advertise drugs. And then you you pay attention to all the horrible th- side effects that come from the drug. But you don't think anything about a drug until your arm swells up the size of a grapefruit or you have searing eye pain or you can't see, or you're impotent, or your blood pressure's through the roof and you're going to die of a stroke, and so now you need something, and that's when the doctor prescribes it. And when the doctor prescribes it, you have no idea what it's going to cost when you go to pick it up, and that's when you start looking into you know how much will your insurance pay for it. So the article says, the foundations and the hospital systems noted problems and failures with the way the generic drug market currently operates. When a drug's patent ends, many generic drug companies enter the market to produce it, driving the cost down. This can lead to the drug becoming less profitable, causing manufacturers to leave the market. Eventually, only a single manufacturer of a generic drug remains, allowing that company to have a monopoly on the market and to artificially inflate the price of the drug as much as it wants, which leaves us with the idea of the patent expiring and the monopoly expiring eventually leads to an end-of-the-chain monopoly, and the effect for the consumer is the same. Product value goes, or product cost goes through the roof. roof. So I asked my friend uh, Dennis Calabrese, who's worked with the uh, Arnold Foundation for some time, uh, to help me understand this. And he said, why don't I get you the guy who's the expert on it, Dan Lillenquist. He's Senior Vice President and Chief Strategy Officer for Intermountain Healthcare. He has an amazing background, which we'll get to the to in a moment. But he's the lead architect and board chair of Civica Rx, which is this initiative to create a non-profit or not-for-profit generic drug company. Dan? Yeah. Thanks Good for morning, being Michael. with us. So explain to us why this, what need this Civica RX is actually filling for, uh, from the patient perspective as it relates to pharmaceuticals. Yeah, so I think you did a nice job setting that up. Let me just say that um, when a drug passes its patented protected life, meaning once that formula enters the public domain and it's available for any manufacturer to make, It's still, there are certain circumstances where that works really well and the price comes down and there are multiple competitors that stay in the market. But for some of um, these smaller drugs where there's, you know, where you really only need one or two producers, what happens over time is, is the number of manufacturers of that drug consolidates to one or two, as you mentioned, and, uh, you know, if they're the only maker of the drug and you need that drug and it's a matter of life or death, they can almost charge you whatever they want. A great example is the one that everybody will know is Martin Shkreli. When he went and took sure. a drug called Daraprim that had been on the market for 50 years and cornered that drug, he raised the price from, you know, seven, you know $13.50 a pill to $750 a pill. And, um, and the price is still there today. And uh, the the problem is, is it's not super attractive for other manufacturers to come in and make that drug because they know that Martin Shkreli could just collapse the price of the drug 
wipe out their investment if they try to make that drug and then just raise the price later because they have this dominant market position. So what we thought with Civica RX is, you know, if we could get the, together with health systems around the country and with philanthropies, we could create a, you know, a totally independent not-for-profit company that doesn't require any government uh, intervention to go in and, and compete for these markets that have been cornered by, by folks who are willing to rip people off. And we did that through a not-for-profit structure so that nobody would own it. Essentially, we're trying to make sure that these drugs remain within reach of, of ordinary Americans, and, uh, and we're fighting for these markets, and that's what the idea is about. I have a minute left in this segment. Why doesn't the free market work in setting a price here? You know, it's really interesting. It's really hard to get capital to flow into a market where there's a dominant monopoly position. And, in fact, the money that's flowing into the market, Michael, is flowing to find opportunities like Daraprim to corner your own market to make money. And uh, so we just saw that this wasn't repairing itself, so we thought we'd try a different structure to get at it. And and the idea is, uh, so you're a non-for-profit. You're you're not manufacturing the pharmaceuticals. So we are going to be an FDA licensed manufacturer, but what we're going to do is contract with contract manufacturing underneath this organization. The, the not-for-profit status is we don't want anybody to own this because the temptation when you compete in a market is then to jack up the price to maximize returns for your shareholders. This is um, that's not what we're trying to do here. We're trying to make sure that society at large benefits from what we're doing, rather than a handful of shareholders. Dan, can you hold with me for just a moment? Yeah. All right. I'm going to post this article from the Houston Business Journal, which kind of puts the the background in here. You know, medicine, uh, the healing process or the treatment process is so odd to me. It's the only thing I can think of. I mean, if you went to a restaurant, you ate your meal, and at the end. They gave you a bill, and you you didn't know whether it was going to be twenty bucks or eight hundred bucks, and and especially with with pharmaceuticals, that's the way you have no idea. You just pay it. It's crazy. All right, we'll talk to Dan Lillenquist coming up. Dan Lillenquist, are you a you a Conway Twitty fan? I, I I don't know him very well, but I I was just listening in. It's a great would, song. Would you be willing to devote some time? I could kind of do a tutorial and just catch you up to speed on what there is to know about Conway. Yeah. Please do. We're going to do it right now. <laughs> okay. So Civica Rx, this group that, that John Arnold's foundation, looks like y'all have raised, I guess, $30 million from three different foundations? No, actually, we've raised, so we raised $30 million from three foundations, but we've raised another $130 million from health systems around the country. Okay, so let's step back from what y'all are doing. Yeah. I want you to be king. Let's step back from what y'all are doing for a moment because you're trying to correct what you see as as faults in the market, errors in the market, or shortcomings in the market. I'm going to make you king of healthcare for a moment. And I know your politics and that you're a free market guy. Tell me how you fix the problem. Solve the problem of innovation because we want companies to to engage in research and development. We want them to have an incentive. They want them to make money so they'll go make these products, but still keeping life-saving drugs for high needs and low-income patients available. How do you do that? Well, I mean, uh, so, so Civic Rx is a start down that road. Listen, the, the challenge with innovation is it takes a lot of money to, you know, to go find a drug, to take it through the process. That The innovators require a time to, to get a, a repayment for, for those drugs, and, and, we, and we allow that with our patent, patented protection, protected process. And I support that. I think we have some of the most innovative companies in the world working in that space. Um, how they price those drugs, uh, you know, in, during the patented time, uh, that, that's a problem that, uh, that Congress is going to have to address. There's no way around it. They've got to try to figure out if they're going to do something. They'd have to, they'd have to address that directly through legislation. But once a drug becomes... Once that formula passes its patented protected life, you know, our feeling is at Civic Rx is that that drug, that formula is owned by the public at that point, and that we think that the prices should be fully transparent. A lot of the challenges in the market with drug pricing is because they hide the ball on the price. They have all these rebate schemes where they pay money, you know, back and forth between different companies, you know, not only just the manufacturers, but the distributors of the drug, and it makes it really difficult for customers to know what the drug, what the appropriate price is. 
So with Civic RX, we've just said, look, we are going to be 100% transparent on our price. We're not going to pay rebates. We're not going to go and try to hide the ball from our customers of what the price of the product is. And, uh, and so that's a founding principle for Civica. And we expect at the end of the day, we make a product. Uh, Civica has the incentive is only to make enough money to make sure that the company stays viable, but nothing more. And we, we've committed to full price transparency. And that, that's where we think the start needs to happen. And by the way, that needs to happen across the board in healthcare. You know, so I'm the chief strategy officer of a $7 billion integrated health system in Utah. And we're just rolling out very transparent pricing here in Utah for, for you know, very common procedures to, to start that effort here as well. Just for a long time, healthcare in general, they've, we've been able to hide the ball on pricing, and that has to, that has to turn around. I mean, consumers deserve to know what, uh, what each procedure or what each service they buy is going to cost beforehand. How in the heck did it happen? that this industry developed and nobody stepped in and said, look, it's good. when you go to a barbecue joint, you go brisket is X per pound and ribs are Y per pound and you choose how much you want to order and what sides and what drink and then you pay for it and you eat your food. It's the only industry I can think of where you get a bill at the end. Why has nobody said we're going to tell you what you pay before you start? Well, it's, uh, it goes back to an economic principle. It's uh, when you are desperate for a service. Look, with brisket, when you look at the price of a brisket, you can choose, choose whether or not to buy it. And by the way, some of the best brisket in the world is down there, so I need to come visit you. But, but you look at the price and you choose to buy it. With healthcare, the demand is, is almost perfectly inelastic, meaning you're almost willing to pay whatever it takes to save right. a life. And that, that allows – I mean, that, that really is a challenge for markets because that allows – the person who's setting that price and providing that service to price discriminate, to kind of figure out how much you're able to pay and charge you that. And, um, and I think part of the problem with healthcare in general is the, the intervention of the, the government payment schemes as well, because at the end of the day, the government with the payment with Medicare and Medicaid, uh, those, they, they tag those payment rates based on commercial rates. So the higher you can move up your commercial payment rate, the higher you can get paid on Medicare and Medicaid. And so there's this game that's gone on over the decades to try to goose up your top-line revenue so that you can maximize the amount of money you draw down from Medicare and Medicaid. And that's become really a big problem in the market. Well, and it seems like there's less uh, price competition. Going back to what you're doing here with Civica RX, the the company, the not-for-profit company that the Arnold Foundation gave this money to, where is this the money that y'all are receiving? Is that going toward product development, or is that going to subsidies? Because you talk about filling the need for people that that can't afford these drugs. So it is not going to subsidies. This is going to, right now, it's going to set up manufacturing that allows Civica to start manufacturing products, and then we are going to do that at the lowest price possible so that we make those available broadly. Here's the dirty little secret with respect to, you know, Martin Shkreli's jacking of the price of that drug. Uh, you know, it still only costs him pennies a pill to make Daraprim. He's just charging $750 because he can so the price that is in the market has almost no relation to the underlying manufacturing costs of that drug. And so what Civic RX is designed to do is to come in and actually manufacture those drugs. We'll use contract manufacturing to help us. But then since we get to set the price, since we have the FDA license or will have the FDA license, we're going to set a price that is more appropriate. We think we could take the price of certain products down by 90 plus percent and then put them back in reach of their ordinary people because we're not trying to maximize returns for shareholders. And so, you know, we expect to take the price down. Our, our goal is to make the mission of Civica is to make sure that essential generic medications are available and affordable to everyone. And so that's where the capital will be going, is going to enter these markets where the price has, you know, shot up to kind of pop the bubble of that price and bring it back within reach of regular people. Dan, can you hold with us, or do you need to go? So I've got to – I actually need to go, Michael. Okay, no worries. I, w- I want to talk further. I'm fascinated about what you guys are doing. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Hey, anytime. I'd love to come back on and discuss this further if you'd like. So you thank it. you. You know, I am fascinated by this subject because at some point or another, we're all going to need pharmaceutical products, all of us. 
and and the traditional marketplace might pricing mechanism how you how you spur innovation but still make a product that that the market can can decide the pricing is uh it has failed michael